Which is better, the Google Pixel 4a or the Motorola Moto G Power? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out. Hi everyone, this is Kevin here, coming at you with my comparison between the Pixel 4a versus the Moto G Power. So let's get started. Now the Pixel 4a was recently launched and the Moto G Power was launched in April of 2020. And while the Pixel 4a is a bit more expensive than the Moto G Power at being roughly $100 more, I know that the Moto G Power has been very popular with many people and I'm sure a decent chunk of people out there are gonna be curious on if they should save 100 bucks with this phone or spend a little bit more to get the Pixel 4a. Now the Google Pixel 4a features a 5.81 inch display compared to a 6.4 inch display with the Moto G Power. So without a doubt, the Moto G Power not only has a bigger display, but it is definitely the larger phone of the two. Now the displays feature different technology as well. So with the Pixel 4a, we are getting an OLED display compared to IPS LCD with the Moto G Power. Now the Pixel 4a's display does look awesome. The colors are great, viewing angles are really good, and those are all benefits that come along with OLED. But the Moto G Power still does have a good display, even though it is LCD. Beyond that, both displays are 1080p. With the Pixel 4a, we're getting a PPI of 443, compared to a PPI of 399 with the Moto G Power. And with the Pixel 4a, we're getting a 19 and a half by nine aspect ratio compared to a 19 by nine aspect ratio with the Moto G Power. And then finally, with the Pixel 4a, we're getting an 83.3% screen to body ratio compared to 83% with the Moto G Power. So that particular metric is very close. Now you can see, looking at the top of both devices, they do both feature a hole punch for the front-facing camera located off to the top left corner. Now with the Pixel 4a, we're getting an 8 megapixel front-facing camera compared to a 16 megapixel front-facing camera with the Moto G Power. Now with the Pixel 4a, we are getting 128 gigabytes of internal storage compared to 64 gigs with the Moto G Power. Now there is no micro SD card expansion with the 4a, whereas the G Power does have micro SD card expansion. So even though the Moto G Power does have half the amount of internal storage, you do at least have the ability to expand it. Neither of these two devices have wireless charging, and they both have fingerprint sensors on the rear. So let's give those a try. So we'll start with the Pixel 4a. There we go, nice and quick. And then now the Moto G Power, and very quick as well. Now one of the things with the Pixel 4a is that the fingerprint sensor is kind of hard to find on the back because it's hardly indented in, so it does take some getting used to, that's for sure. Now, neither of these two devices feature face unlock, so if you do want that feature, you are gonna have to look elsewhere. Now, taking a look at the cameras on the back. With the Pixel 4a, we just have one camera at 12.2 megapixels, and then with the Moto G Power, we have a 16 megapixel main camera, an eight megapixel ultra wide angle camera, and a two megapixel macro camera. So going into the camera apps here on both devices, obviously there's quite a few differences that you probably noticed already just by seeing the cameras that we have, but definitely for the 4A, they've taken a different approach. Instead of giving the device a bunch of different cameras and camera features, they've decided to double down on the main camera and make that especially good. And I do respect that. I mean, if there are certain features though that you want, such as an ultra wide angle camera, then you can only get that with the Moto G Power. But to be honest, with how good the camera quality is from the Pixel 4a, and it's way better than any other phone in this price range, I will definitely give them a free pass for not having a macro camera or an ultra wide angle camera. But both devices do give you portrait mode for the front and rear cameras, which is definitely nice. You get that nice blurred out background that I know we're all a big fan of for sure, is unlike anything that you could find from any device, especially under $500. So when it comes to cameras, you know, I'll give the Moto G Power credit for having an ultra wide angle camera and a macro camera, but really beyond that, 
the Google Pixel 4a is in a class of its own. And that's really awesome, and that's a trend I'd like to see expand across other smartphone manufacturers, giving you a really amazing main camera, despite the phone not being extremely expensive. Now with the Google Pixel 4a, we're getting six gigabytes of RAM and the Qualcomm Snapdragon 730G. And with the Moto G Power, we're getting four gigabytes of RAM, so two less, and the Qualcomm Snapdragon 665. Now, I feel like both phones offer a decent amount of performance, especially for their various price ranges. Now, I did run a benchmark test with both, and I'll show you the score from that right now. So with the Pixel 4a, I got a single core score of 551 and a multi-core score of 1649, compared to the Moto G Power, where I got a single core score of 304 and a multi-core score of 1309. So without a doubt, when it comes to these benchmark scores, the Pixel 4a does have the better scores of the two. Now video recording with both devices does max out at 4K at 30 FPS with the rear camera, so that is very awesome. Now as far as battery capacity goes, the Pixel 4a features a beefy 3140 milliamp hour internal battery with 18 watt fast charging, and the Moto G Power has a much bigger battery though at 5000 milliamp hours with 10 watt fast charging. So definitely if you're looking for a device with amazing battery life, the Moto G Power is the better choice of the two, in my opinion. But on the other hand, you are going to still get very good battery life with the 4A. Now the software experiences here are similar and different. So with the Pixel 4A, we are getting three years of updates as far as the software goes, which is great. And we are getting the Pixel experience here, so pretty much a stock variant of Android. And with the Moto G Power, we're getting pretty much the same type of thing. It's very stock, but there's a few tweaks in here from Motorola to make the software better, in my opinion. And same with the 4A. There's some additional tweaks they've done specifically for this phone and the other Pixel phones that you can't find with any other Android devices. Now, taking a closer look at the hardware of both devices, I already talked quite a bit about the front panels on both phones, but you can see here that the bezels are very small all around for the 4A. Whereas with the Moto G Power, we do have a little bit of a thicker bottom bezel, but still in general, I feel like both handsets do look nice. They also both feature a plastic build beyond the display, which is glass, of course. Now taking a look at the left side of both devices, they both have the slot for the micro SD card and SIM card. Then on the right, they both have the power button and volume button. I'm not really a big fan of the placement of the power button on the 4A. I wish that was the button on the bottom and then the volume button was up top similar to the setup with the Moto G Power, but I suppose that you could eventually get used to this with the 4A, so it's not really a deal breaker. Now taking a look at the top of both devices on the Pixel 4A, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a noise canceling microphone. And then with the Moto G Power, we just have the noise canceling mic. And then on the bottom of both phones with the Pixel 4A, we have the microphone, speaker, and USB-C port for charging and data transfer. And with the Moto G Power, we have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, USB-C port for charging and data transfer, microphone, and speaker. And then on the back of both phones, we do have the camera modules on both. So just a single camera, again, with the Pixel 4a. And then we have the fingerprint sensor. But one big difference is that we have more of a matte finish with the 4a and then a glossy finish with the G Power. And I definitely prefer the matte finish on the 4a over what we're getting with the G Power. Let's now do a speed test comparison between these two phones. So we're going to start by going to the camera apps on both. So one, two, three, go. And it was about a tie, maybe a little bit quicker with the Google Pixel 4a. Let's now go to Google Chrome. One, two, three, go. And definitely quicker there with the 4a out of the two. And you can see in the side by side here how much brighter and clearer, at least at this angle, the display is with the 4a. And I do have the brightness cranked up to 100% on both phones. But since this phone is OLED, that's one of the benefits with it is that you are going to be getting better viewing angles. But let's now go to yahoo.com. One, two, three, go. And it was about a tie in both. Let's go to engadget.com. One, two, three, go. And it looks like it loaded up quicker with the Moto G Power, but not too far behind on the 4A. So scrolling is very smooth with both phones. That's not an issue. Let's go to this article, one, two, three, go. 
and it is quicker with the Google Pixel 4a at pulling up. So in general, I'm a big fan of the performance of both phones, but I'd say that the 4a does perform better in general, without a doubt. But I hope you enjoyed this video about these two devices, and let me know if you have any questions or any other feedback to provide. But this is the Google Pixel 4a versus the Moto G Power.